Hi there. So in this little segment, we're going to talk about appropriate precision. Often, you'll see people in write in lab reports that they measured, say, a concentration of hydrogen in zirconium of 243.4 parts per million. Um, but this is obviously wrong, um, since we can only measure hydrogen in zirconium to a precision of about 30 parts per million physically. Um, so essentially, that number of 243.4 if the precision is only 30, it's really 240 plus minus 30 parts per million. Um, so that's the wrong thing to do. Um, so in this segment, what I want to show you is how to handle precision and uncertainty correctly when writing lab reports or scientific documents. And uh, as an example, I'm going to uh, get this here. What I've got here is a, a tensile test specimen, um, and it's got this central section here that's got a diameter which I'm going to need to know. I'm going to need to know it for the first MSE 104 lecture. Um, and uh, so I'm going to take my calipers here and measure its width and its diameter here, and I get a diameter of about 6.77 millimeters. So I'll write that down 6.77 millimeters. And I'm going to scrub that off just there. And the question is, how accurately have I measured that diameter? Well, I could try measuring it several times. If I do, I get uh, 6.76, uh, 6.74, I keep on going, so I get the following numbers. Um, 6.76 uh, 6.74, 6.77, uh, another two for luck, say, 6.77 again, and 6.80 millimetres. So uh, it looks like I've got an average there of something like plus or minus, what, 0.2, something like that, millimetres. Um, but I could do better than just guess. Um, I could actually do something like take the average. So if these are my measurements x, xi, let's say, I could say that the mean of x, x with a little bar on it, was taken, found by taking the sum of all the measurements xi and dividing by the number of observations. So that's i equals 1 to n. There's six of them in this case. And if I do that, uh, I get a, a, a mean of 6.77 uh, I'll check my precision, 1.7 millimetres. Now, uh, the other thing I want to know, that still doesn't get me to the uncertainty in the measurement. I could take also the standard deviation, say. We'll know about that. And we say that the standard deviation squared, the uncertainty in x squared, um, is found by taking the sum of the from i equals 1 to n of the differences between the xi's and x bar all squared, divided by the number of observations minus one. Because I could have kept on going and measured, if I had a million samples, I'd measure each one of them. And if I had measured all million, um, then I'd use n. But if I'm measuring only a sample of them, say 10 out of the million, I'd use n minus one. And here I've taken a sample. Um, and if I do that, I get a standard deviation of 0 0.0204 millimeters. If I do that with these numbers. Um, if I uh, want to find the uncertainty in the mean, then, the uncertainty in x bar, um, sorry, that's squared, so the is equal to sigma x. Um, if I take the uncertainty in x bar, that's given by the uncertainty in x divided by the square root of the number of measurements. So I divide that number by a further square root of 6. And that gives me a number of 0 0.0034. Um, and that's quite a bit smaller, in fact. Um, let me just check that number for a second. So, in fact, on checking of the maths, it's 0 0.008 um, uh, millimetres. So now I can say I can write its diameter down as having a diameter x uh, bar is equal to 6. Uh, seven seven 
and I'm going to round that to one significant figure, and that's going to round to 0 0.08. So 6.772 plus minus 0 0.008 millimetres. So I've measured it to an uncertainty of about eight hundredths of the width of a human hair. A human hair is about 100 micrometres wide. So about eight hundredths, very simply in my office with a pair of calipers. That's amazing. Um, now, I've written the uncertainty down only to one digit of precision or one significant figures. And that's very important. That's a general rule of thumb as to how much precision we should use. Now, if I did enough measurements, we would uh, assume that they would follow a normal distribution. And a normal distribution looks a bit like this. If I take the frequency of measurement against uh, the measurement value, then they would do something like this. They'd have a central value here at x bar, and they'd have a width. This distribution falls off uh, at a rate which is an e to the minus x squared type thing, and the amount of quickness with which it falls away is a measure of that uncertainty. In fact, uh, and that what we find when we do the math, which we'll do later in the course, is that two-thirds approximately, actually 68% of the measurements, will fall within plus or minus one standard deviation. Um, and 95% uh, of the measurements will fall within two standard deviations, and 99.8, or all but two in a thousand, will fall within three standard deviations. Now, there's a couple of things to say about that, um, and to do that, I'm going to use this dice here. So, I've got a dice, and I'm going to roll this dice lots of times. So I roll this dice, I get a 2, 3, 4, 2, again, 4 again, oh, weird, 2 again, wow, 4, 4, 5, finally, 1, I haven't got a 6 yet, oh, there's a 6, off we go, 4 again, right, 1 again, and so on. And if I did it enough times, I could plot my frequency chart, and in that case, my frequency chart, if it's a fair dice, I'd have my measurements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and they would all occur equally frequently. So they wouldn't be normally distributed at all. But I can still um, find the mean, which will be 3.5, and if I had enough observations, n would be very large, and the standard deviation would converge to a value of 1.71, if you do the maths. And the uncertainty in the mean would eventually converge to zero, because I'd be dividing by n again, and it would get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so the mean value is 3.5. But because the data in this case are non-continuous, that messes things up a bit, um, but also they're not normally distributed. So although we can calculate a standard deviation, it's not guaranteed that two-thirds of the data will lie within plus or minus one standard deviation. Um, and this assumption that the data are normally distributed is an assumption that isn't necessarily true. Now, finally, over here, we need to talk about levels of precision. If you don't have many measurements, then usually, uh, if you assume that they're normally distributed, you should take two-thirds of the range. So for this data here, the range is 6.80 to 6.74. If I discard those two measurements, I've got six of them, two-thirds of the range is about four of them. I've got uh, I'd still calculate my average as being 6.77, and I've got a range from about plus minus 0.1, actually, right? 6.676 to 6 0.75, 0.1, something like that, which is actually quite close um, to the uncertainty that I measured, 0.01. Um, so uh, taking two-thirds of the range is usually a safe thing to do as a quick and dirty rule of thumb. Um, and if you only have one measurement, say it's very expensive to make the measurement, um, then uh, I would play around with my calipers. I'd, I'd estimate about 0.01 millimetres, because that's when I do multiple measurements, that's about the uncertainty I, I get. So I would then quote a diameter of 6.77 plus minus 0 0.01 millimetres. And that would be my estimate. And if you don't have... Um, um, precision to which you're estimating your measurement is, the measurement isn't really valid. So you've got to quote an uncertainty, otherwise you're not really doing science. Okay? Um, another option people use are significant figures, what's called SF. And here we quote the number of numbers of accuracy we use. So if we measure a number, 
let's say if we measure a number of 1243 yeah now to 3SF I would take the first three digits of that or 1240 yeah if I had a measurement of 1245 I'd round the last digit so I would measure 1250 to 3SF yeah if I had a measurement of 1240.11 then to 3SF that's still 1240 but to 4SF it's also 1240 so it's only meaningful if I say how many significant figures are used so this one here is 4SF and that tells you something when you're reading the number in a paper or a report how precise how much how you've done the rounding okay so you need to say how many significant figures you're using there's one other thing to think about is say I measured a diameter of something a piece of uh, sand say and I measured that it was 0 0.0343 millimeters to 2SF that would be 0 0.034 millimeters yeah um, to 2SF so we ignore the trailing zeros when we're talking about significant figures. Or we could say it was 34 micrometers to 2SF. Be the same thing. You see? Um, now, uh, the other last thing to say there is that um, I, I need to quote that. And preferably, I would say that that was 0 0.034 uh, millimeters plus or minus 0 0.0, say, 3 millimeters and that would be giving me my uncertainty properly. So that's how you handle significant figures and that's how you handle trailing zeros as you quote the number of significant figures you're using. So to conclude, if you're in a lab and you need to report a number on your write-up, that's how you do it. If possible, make multiple measurements and find the mean and find the uncertainty in the mean. Uh, if you can't estimate the uncertainty, then Write your result down appropriately, either use two-thirds of the range or estimate your uncertainty, but always try and get to using a precision. If you can't do that, use significant figures, and that's how you use significant figures appropriately. So that's it for uh, this segment. The message is always use an appropriate level of precision and explain what it is and why you've done it.